Hi, hi. Welcome to Shrink Wrapped. I'm Allison Colarossi here with Dr. David Colarossi, and we are here for another episode of Shrink Wrapped. Hi, Dr. Dave. How have you been? I missed you. I missed you too. It, it was too long. Too long because you've been traveling. I was on a work trip in Kauai. And I was on a work trip in California. Yeah. So that's why we've been a little bit delayed. Yeah, but it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. And this is our first time this year recording one for YouTube. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. You really dressed up for us. You know, <laughs> this the, you get what you get, you know? <laughs> I the, think if we want to do it, we just do it. We wear what we wear. Yes. That's to, to you, though, Miss Makeup. Just go no makeup. Okay. What would my mom think? She'd say I look like a corpse. What? My mom used to tell me, like, I always, like, you look like a corpse. You need when some you, makeup. <laughs> what an awful thing to say. Really? <laughs> yeah. So you, should, that's why women need to wear makeup. But I feel like you have dark features, so you don't need makeup. <laughs> right? <laughs> True. Anyway. All right. So <laughs> I have a fun, can I, I'd like to take the lead on this <laughs> podcast because I got a fun idea. Oh, I think. We'll see if you think it's fun. I wrote down a bunch of questions in an effort to help the audience get to know us, this podcast better. So I have a bunch of questions that I'm going to ask you. And every question I ask you, I will answer also. But I'm hoping that it it helps people better get to know who we are. Okay. And then, like, if some of the answers require a change of habit for a better life, are you interested in going deeper and having a habit with it? <laughs> what? <laughs> like a tip. Why you you love tips so much? I love tips. All right, we'll do <laughs> we'll come up with a couple of tips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you think that our our audience is like we keep getting these t- these like <laughs> half baked tips <laughs> that they don't do them themselves, but they're but we're wanting to do them. Is it aspir- Yeah. If should. you're not striving for wait, if you're not growing, you're dying. Dave. Has- hashtag tip. Okay. <laughs> All right. You ready? <laughs> yeah. All right, so the first question I have for you is, do you want to tell the story of how we met? Sure. David and I met in college, and um, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but I'm a twin. I have a twin brother, and so I never um, I never did anything without my twin brother. So uh, we always went to the same school. We went to the same high school, and um, I just always had a buddy and college was the first time I ever did anything without Drew. And so um, I was really, really nervous to go to college um, without my twin brother. And I think he was like, didn't care at all. He w- he went and found his art people and he found his people, but I was very scared. And so my parents um, at orientation uh, saw David walk in and I like was by their side because I was so scared. <laughs> And they said, oh, that boy's cute. Why don't you go sit next to him? And so I did. And I introduced myself. I said, I'm Allison. Nice to meet you. And that's how we met. That, I, I feel like it's a, I really <laughs> like that story. And then but part of me thinks, what a mistake your parents made. <laughs> like they're thinking like, oh, this is a, like, this will be a benign relationship. <laughs> but things escalated very quickly. If your mom knew. How fast things would move. She would be like, this is a bad I think deal. she likes you. I think you're the favorite brother-in-law. And I can say that because no one's going to listen. I don't think the bar <laughs> is not high right now, though. It's a very political family, and I, I align more with the parents, so I'm I'm good. No one aligns with my parents, though. So, like... <laughs> yeah, they're pretty... Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I don't think I can... And that's a, that described well. I don't have anything mm. to add to that. Okay. What about you... Let's do one more that makes me look good first because the next <laughs> one's going to be n- negative. <laughs> what about, or no, no, how did we get engaged? <laughs> of course you did this. Um, so in in college, David and I worked at a weight loss and fitness camp in, in La Jolla, California, and we loved it. And we would go there every summer and work at this camp for, you know, I think it was like 10 to 12 weeks, wasn't it? It was a, it was a long camp. And um, David did um, something called behavior modification to try and help the kids, like basically therapy. And I taught group fitness at the camp, and it was 
really special and a great camp. The reason I'm telling that story is because we would always be there every summer and we'd go, we would take the kids snorkeling in La Jolla Cove. And if you guys know La Jolla Cove, it's, it's hilarious. It, there's not, it's beautiful, but there's not like a whole lot to see. There's like a few Garibaldi's. I would say <laughs> like, it's not, it's not like, it's not like a snorkeling in the Bahamas or something. Right. I think there's a lot of fish. Sometimes sometimes there was like this weird squid infestation or something. Yeah. Um, so one day, like ap- way after college, and I, David um, was, David was like, let's go to San Diego and go snorkeling. I was like, what? Like, cause I had, I was like, that's confusing. That seems like a really random thing to do, but. Okay. You, I had gotten into my doc program at DU. Yes. And I said, will you move to Colorado with me? And you said, I want a ring, a house, and a dog. Oh, yeah, that's true. All those things. That's what you said. Uh-huh. Okay, so that I'm going to Cal- Colorado and you have no plans of coming because I haven't got you a ring, a house, or a dog. Yeah. Okay, keep going with the story. And then? And so, um, yeah, well, so, Yeah. I lost my train of thought. Oh, so before you left to go to to do your PhD program, um, you just wanted, for some reason, you're like, I feel like going to La Jolla for like before I leave because I'm not going to see the water in a long time. And I was like, that's weird. But it didn't even occur to me that you might be proposing. And then he had like this total bug in his, be in his bonnet to go snorkeling. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I, every time at that time, every time I went snorkeling, and I think just like a few weeks before I went to go b- visit Drew in Florida, and every time I get stung by a jellyfish. And it's not like a little sting. Like in, right before in Florida, Drew had to rip the, the tentacles Did off of me. Did he on you? No, I, I asked him to, and he wasn't comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. So I was pretty reluctant to get in the water, but eventually I did. And David, I'm I'm a little ADHD, I would say. So David banked on the fact that I would stop paying attention to him and just go off on my own, which I did. I I it didn't. I feel it, like it took I no time at all. You were immediately <laughs> on your own, <laughs> just interested in what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also like behind the scenes, like a little bit of a nervous snorkeler. Like I'm never feeling like I'm getting enough air in. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, <laughs> and I can hear it. <laughs> yeah. So David swims up to me like out of nowhere. He swims up to me with this huge conch shell. And I was like, and I, and he came to like hand it to me. And I was like, I don't, I, there is a big creature coming I out swim, of that. So, okay. So <laughs> she goes off, she gets ADHD and start, start just <laughs> veering off into the Pacific. So I swam back to shore. I got the conch shell out of my bag, which I had gone to a pet shop and just bought a big conch <laughs> shell. I went to Zales and I bought a hundred dollar ring and I zip tied it to a note that I wrote that was like, Allison, you're the best. I love <laughs> you. Whatever. Will you marry me? And I laminated the thing. I zip tied it to the laminated note, stuffed it in the conch shell and hid it in my backpack. Well, I was going to get to that part. You didn't, you, I feel like you told, to help. I know, but you told, you told, like, I was telling how you were coming at me with a conch and I didn't want it. And then you turned it over and there was like a no. And I was like, oh, this is like pirate treasure. I didn't know. I like still didn't occur to me that until I opened the note with a ring attached that it was uh, an engagement, which, and then I promptly choked on all the water. It was fun. It was a great engagement. I'm taking a bow if you're, just so everybody know, I'm very proud of my engagement story. <laughs> yeah. Because also, ahead of that, I told you that I wasn't going to get on a knee, and I didn't. Why, but why were you so anti getting on one knee? I wasn't. I just think it's funny that, <laughs> that I got away with not. Uh, okay. Yeah, but then I got, which this may be a good segue to the next thing. <laughs> I got some critical feedback. Feedback is a gift. I got a, I got a <laughs> gift from Allison afterwards because I had no plan after that. So she's, I was like, we're engaged. And I was like, do you want to go get some lunch? She's like, where do you want to go? And I was like, I don't know. We'll see what's, we'll see what's open. And we went and we promptly found a place. I like no a problem. plan. I like but it. But she wanted me to like, she yeah. wants, she wanted a house, a ring, a dog and a plan. And I did not have a plan. You know what? I, I should have stipulated that before marriage. <laughs> Plans. 
All right. <laughs> See, next question for you is, what do you, uh, what frustrates you most about me? Well, I think that you won't spend a time planning. Wait, let me, I, I want to ask that question. There's mm-hmm. a better way to ask that question. What do you think, what do you think frustrates me most about you? What? Oh, no, what, what, it, what frustrates you most about me? I think the biggest frustration is my bedtime. <laughs> is that not it? Or my I frustration mean, with you. Like, I feel like you, you, the only time yes. you're irritated as me, me is when I'm irritated at you. Yes. My biggest <laughs> frustration with you is you being <laughs> frustrated with me about not planning. Okay, so how do we remedy this? Because I feel like it starts with the chicken. <laughs> your frustration or my lack of is it, your lack of planning because i think your lack of planning causes anxiety because we're like even to yourself like yeah. i feel like you're always like a little harried <laughs> not always harried you are but there's always like i gotta go to fedex and I, it should have been done it's like my thing is in an hour and it's closed and like there's no fedex open. it's always like a little like that. I like to live on the edge. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so I think, yes. Okay, that, that, was, that was less fun than I thought it would be. The, the thing <laughs> that I think you hate, uh, dislike most about me is that I'm not planful. Mm-hmm. And the thing I like, di- I like that frustrates me most about you is that you get mad about me not being planful. So where do we fix it? Let's think about it this way. I got another way. Let's let's reframe. Let's reframe. What's our hot tip here? <laughs> well, hold on. Let me just let's just reframe here. Okay. All right. When's the last time that I was mad about, at you about anything? With and not about you being mad at me. I mean, you can't put me on the hot spot like that. But it's an interesting. I think that this is the tip, or this is this is a, if I was if I was the ther- if I was ther- if I was being a therapist to us, I would say that the biggest point of friction for us, you get angry at me for not planning. Mm. I understand that I can improve. This is maybe that's the that's the chicken, <laughs> and I very rarely I don't have anything that I that nothing that you, there's nothing you do that bothers me other than getting mad at me. No, I there are things that I do. Like one, what? if I am not prepared to video <laughs> you get so mad and if i'm yes. s- or if i'm sleepy and like that is really something that i can't help like i don't know how to la- like last night would have been a perfect podcast because i actually couldn't sleep and then i just was like well i'm gonna take nyquil and that was the worst decision ever because all day, I felt terrible. I've never heard of anybody. I mean, I, I guess I've heard of it, but it's like a real, like, mm-hmm. how fortunate are you that you are so used to falling asleep immediately that when you're up for like 10 minutes, you're like, I, I got to medicate this. And then you go do my Because medical. I wanted to get back on my normal life schedule, which is a 40 th- 4.30 a.m. wake up. And when I'm looking at the time and it's midnight, I, I also know that that's not going to go well. And so I just, like, and I think that's what happened yesterday. By the way, no one should take NyQuil if they want to fall asleep because it leads if to low not, energy the whole next day. If you're not sick. If you're not sick. All right, but we got, we, so we got to have track though. Okay. So the, the, what's the, what's the hot tip about our, because we really have, which is, by the way, this is true. Here's a hot, this is a hot tip. In most relationships, you really only have one fight. Like the whatever you if you're in a long term <laughs> relationship with somebody, the fight that you're having is probably happening over and over and over and over and over it's again. It's exhausting, right? It's the same thing <laughs> that you fight about. And I think our thing is, you would like me walking around with a calendar planning everything, and that's just not. I'm just not built that, that way. But I feel like that is exaggerated. That's not what I want. I want just some thought. Uh, just some like think ahead time and there's just like zero for you and there's not zero and i i actually agree with you like okay. in things that you're interested in you definitely think it through and have plans in our marriage and our family you do not 
Okay. Which is what's frustrating. So I know you have the capacity to do it. You just don't. And I am. I would love to talk to your assistant, Stephanie, because I, I think she would be on the same page with me. Stephanie, can I call a friend? <laughs> I don't know who I'm more afraid of, Stephanie or you. Oh, really? She's scarier than me? No, I'm, I'm, you're <laughs> equally scary. Um. Uh, okay. Hmm. All right. She's not. She's not my assistant. She's a scheduler. She's Your not, scheduler. She's like, I don't have a have an assistant. I would love an assistant, but she's not an assistant. I also would like an assistant. All right. What do I? Uh, and I'll answer this one also. What do you think I don't understand about you? Stumped you. You did stump me. I think, um, I think you don't understand my need for security. And like, um, probably like routine. I think like I need more of a, like a routine thing you do and security and like knowing what's going to happen. Stability. Stabil I need more stability than you. And, and you are really good operating without that. Or like, like the example of the, um, when I had like this whole plan and I was ready to execute it because I knew that I was traveling and I was like, I'm going to do this for Dave. I'm going to have all the planets ready to go and it's going to be great. And you walk in and you're like, let's switch this, right? I'm just like, what? I needed to have this done so I could do this, this, and this. So, what do uh, you think? Is that a fair answer? Yeah, I think it's a fair. It's a good. I mean, it it folds into your number one complaint about me, which is not planning. It sounds like there's you're, <laughs> you're, there's a lot of a lot of energy that way. Me planning more. So, how come you don't plan more? Is my question. Like knowing that it, the distress that it causes me, the anxiety that it puts on our relation, like the tension it puts on our relations, the anxiety that raises in the household why won't you why won't okay. you like combat your your inner self to shake it up i have i think i have a, I have a couple of reasons okay first of all <laughs> i do okay so that you're characterizing this like i i was just i was just talking to somebody about about this like i think you think that i just float through life like a buoy and like you can't figure out how i get anything done because i plan nothing Oh, and no, I, you should use the term that I used to use for Vince all the time, which was you're a bumper. Yes. <laughs> you're just like, through. you're like a bumper car, like just bumping into. <laughs> yes. So, and I don't think that that's, the, I don't think that's an, an accurate characterization, but I, okay. So here's the, here's the reason why I don't. Uh, it's limiting. I think that there is a, there is a, you know, people always think about planning as being really valuable but to me, when you set a plan, it's restrictive. Now we have to do this thing. And what if I don't want to do this thing? When you create a plan, you're unable, it makes it harder to pivot off that plan. Like the example is, you know, when we were, when we, you and I traveled to Greece for our um, honeymoon and I planned it, mm -hmm. right? And I planned all the hotels. But we start off and we go like, oh, I don't want to go to this hotel. But I'm like, I already paid for the room. So that's where we got to go. And I mean, that's a big, that's a, that's a very specific example, but I think the same thing is true when you plan anything. I, I feel like it just boxes me in and I would rather just let it roll. What you're like, what do you want to have for dinner? You're like, you would like to plan dinner for the entire week. And I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm going to want to have on what on, on Friday. I, David, what? okay. I'm, I, I'm, can I, I, no, I got to <laughs> jump in here because it is just simply a fallacy what, what you you're mean? saying because David, if you have life goals, like you want to eat healthy, you want yes. to eat healthy. I, and so because when you don't have a plan, then you go out and you spend money and you eat unhealthy. The other thing is like for Valentine's, <laughs> I got, I am going out of town. I won't be in town for Valentine's. I got the kids a Valentine's present because I knew I'd be out of town. I planned ahead and I said, David, I can't find the, like the little Valentine's candies. I got the kids and he was like, oops. <laughs> But now, yeah. now there's no time. 
what? to get more. And Wait, I'm just hold on, hold on, hold on, I can't hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let's just tell the whole let's let's the whole story. <laughs> it's really awesome. I it, I I do genuinely appreciate mm. the planning for Valentine's Day. But not know, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I have no, to finish my thought. I have you to finish. already finished. No, it. it's not done. And like when we look at our whole year, like the year calendar that we want to do and we want to live our best lives. And I feel like in 2023, we really, we really shot for the moon on that. And we did a lot of cool things. And I feel like if we're not a, if we're not planful about it, it becomes overwhelming and anxiety provoking. So like if we went to Italy and didn't have a plan, didn't have a car, didn't have the hotels, like, that's all very stressful because then we're, like, bumping. We have two kids. Like, if we don't know where we're going, then every the anxiety raises. Okay. Can we just do it? Let let's talk about the process here. All right? <laughs> so you said, here's my complaint about you, David. Yeah. Is that you don't plan. And then I said, I, I was trying, you asked the question, mm. why do you not plan? Right? Mm. And I was trying to tell you from my perspective why I don't. And then you interrupted me and said, here's why not planning is a problem. But honey, I'm not arguing. I got, I understand why you feel that way. I'm sure. Can I share my perspective? Yeah. Also, I know why you don't plan. (laughs) I I know that while you were talking, I I totally realized why you, you don't plan. I'm only halfway through my my explanation. But I know. Okay. Why? Because somebody else does. Oh, jeez. I set you up for success when I go out of town. I'm going to make it so it's so stressful. <laughs> all right. <laughs> First of all, okay. So one reason why, I back to the what I'm, doing, <laughs> what I'm saying here is, uh, for me, it feels restrictive. I understand that that may have, it may have bad downstream impact on my family, but in my mind, it's restrictive. It's inefficient. I don't like doing it. It's not fun. It's not exciting. It's excruciatingly boring to plan. I don't have a lot of need. I have very little need for stability. I think so for psycho- psychologically, it's hard for me to believe that you also have, that you have a very, that you, I, it's hard for me to put myself in your shoes and understand that you have such a need for stability. So I don't, I don't think that I reckon, I, I don't recognize that it's as big of an issue for you as you say it is. I just think it's like you just, <laughs> you know, in the background <laughs> getting mad at me, but I don't like, is it really, I think you're, it doesn't elevate to a significant concern for mm-hmm. me. I think that's all my excuses. Okay. I tip, Here's the tip of the day. I really feel I unseen plan. and unheard right now. You feel unseen and unheard? <laughs> yes. You've been talking the whole... I hear you. I know, but you never change. It's always our fight. Okay, but can you also... Okay. <laughs> Come on. Can you also acknowledge that I do plan things? You make it sound like I don't plan anything. You plan everything that you want to plan. So you do too. You don't plan. You don't plan the podcasts, but you plan vacations and other stuff that you're into that you want to plan. I don't want to plan dinner every day. Te- eh? You do not plan dinner every night. Lies, not- lies, Allison. <laughs> oh my god, she. I feel like we have an audience. Hey, she does not plan everything. All right, so planning is one thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you want to know what you don't get about me? Yeah. Or do you want to spend the entire podcast with you telling me to change? I enjoyed. My I enjoyed that. <laughs> Things I felt it was I, cathartic. I thought you felt <laughs> unseen and unheard <laughs> by you, but I feel like I got to say my piece. Anyway, what? She says her piece all the time. <laughs> okay. I think that you don't. I think that you are unaware of my depth of emotion. Not that I have a lot of emotion. <laughs> I think that I am shallow. I agree that, that you have more depth. I think I am a, compared to you, you are a deep well of emotion. And I maybe am a puddle. <laughs> but it's like a three inch deep puddle. And I think you think it's black ice. <laughs> like you, I feel like I am, I worry about how you're doing psychologically and emotionally. If you're in a bad mood, or you're not feeling confident, or you're anxious, or you're sad, it's a uh, it's a thing that I'm trying to navigate with you. I think you just think like he's cool. That's not true. 
that's what I think. That's what oh, I think. I'm sorry you feel that way. I feel like even today you said you were talking about a meeting and you're like, oh, I don't know if it went well. And I was like, oh, what happened? I think you're interested in me, but did you worry about my confidence? Well, I did worry about it. Was I asked you, I said, do you feel like you were prepared enough? And you're like, oh, yeah, it wasn't me. It was like. <laughs> 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 so, like, I. And the, I feel first like of all, you my give... confidence was fine. I'm not, but this is not, I'm, I want to say you're not misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm, it's not that you're not available for me or interested in me, mm -hmm. but I think you assume that I'm fine always. I think you, I think you're like, he's, you know, I don't think, you, I don't think it's ever a thing. You're never like, David's been down this week. And I'm worried. About, I don't think you. I don't think you ever think about it. I feel like you've said that to me before, and so I actively try, like when you when you get stressed out, I actively try to make it things easier for you, so you're less stressed. Mm -hmm. So it may not come out in words, but mm -hmm. in actions, I'm trying to make things always. I'm always trying to make things easier for you, so mm -hmm. like it brings down your anxiety level. So I don't. I maybe not say it to you, but I think it has to do with our love language. Um, which is I'm acts of service. But okay. All right. Like when you're stressed, like an example was yesterday. You like I you told me at the beginning of the day, like I'm stressed out. And I was like, Oh, well, I'll take the kids and I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna go get your dad's birthday breakfast. I'm gonna go take care of all of that and it's gonna all be set up for when he gets there. I'm gonna make him a cake. I'm gonna take the kids to the gymnastics meet so you have all day to like decompress and work on what you need to work on. So I think you I'm not good with my words, but I think with my actions, I try to do that. I think that's probably true. I I did not bucket all of that under that. I did not bucket your behavior on Sunday as I I thought you were. I oh, that's interesting. You're right. So I did not connect that to you worrying about my anxiety. I connected it to you were gone all last week, and I had driven the kids to the mountains on Saturday. And you're leaving this week. And I thought it was like a, how do I make up for the fact that I've not been around and I'm not going to be around? I didn't think that you were doing it because of. No, I mean, I, I mean, this, you, that was that. But also like every time, like when you're feeling stressed out, like I do things like that. Even when I'm not traveling where I'll be like, I'm going to take the kids to do this so you can like have time to do your podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. I could have got it wrong, but that's the. You're right. wrong. Well, how come when you. Wrong. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> wrong. How come when you. I thought you were a therapist. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay. All right. I, well, uh, jury's out still, by the way. Also, I know mornings are really hard for you. And so, like, I was trying to get you set up for success with the kids while I'm gone. You know, mornings are really hard for me. You go work out in the morning and I get the kids breakfast and take them to school. Can we, there's a little bit of, I feel like this is like a sister wise dynamic where you feel like the audience is your sister and you're like, look what all I'm doing. There's a little bit of like, right ladies, look what David doesn't do. Right? No. <laughs> okay. What's the biggest, I feel like we're doing too many fights here. What do you like most about, let's, talk, let's do a positive one. What do you like most about me? Um, I like your willingness to um, tinker and learn new things and go all in. You have lots of hobbies and you go on all in on each hobby. And I feel like it's a very, um, I didn't, I feel like I didn't grow up with a family that had like growth mindset. And I, I feel like your growth mindset and action. It's beautiful. I love it. Oh, that's really sweet. Well, thank you. Do you want to know what I like most about you? Yeah, what, what's that? Well, I think it's this. So I don't have a, like a, when I was thinking about this, I was. it's a more self-interested thing. But I feel like you, I, I should say this. I just told you before the podcast, you are, I would never have, I would never have thought that I would have a wife that I was as good a mom as you are. I think you are a wonderful mother and that, and it was beyond, it sort of has outstripped my, um, expectations on that. So I think that's a, that's a good answer. And you're my best friend. There's like nobody that I like more than you. So I should just say those two out of the way. But the thing that stands out to me is I feel like you are, 
you have zero judgment about my personality. I mean, like, I, I shouldn't say this. I mean, you have a lot of judgment about the planning piece of it. <laughs> but I feel like my sense of humor, and if I get interested in the thing, things, or if I have a uh, a view that's counterculture, or I have, like, there's very, you have very little, like, I mean, you have no negative critique of who I am. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I can be totally me, and it's, I can't, I can't imagine a time when you're, like, like, my, that my view is a bad view. Yeah. I actually, I think that's true. I think it's because I look up to you a lot. So I feel like, I feel like you are very good interpersonally with people. You never, you don't seem to, and you, like, one of the other things that I like about you is, like, nothing really ruffles your feathers. You, like, actually, like, if someone came at you, you, um, other than, like, the comments, you know, yeah, but, like, the, the, but nothing, like, I feel like you're never... You don't take things personally. So I feel like that's a good quality, too. Except for the comments. And I, I think globally, I'm not super judgmental. So when you were saying that, like, I don't judge you, I don't feel like I judge a lot of people. And, um, like, I, I like, appreciate when people, except for, like, <laughs> <laughs> hyper-masculine people. <laughs> but, no, I, I feel like I'm not. Hold on. I would like to be considered hyper-masculine. Am I not, do I not fit that bill? No, I mean, you are, of course. <laughs> no, but I was just thinking, um, I don't, I think, like, I think I, I like, I like individuals. I don't, I don't yes. like sheep. So, like, if you're different and interesting, I think I typically like that. I definitely like passionate people, yeah. people that get excited about stuff, because then I get excited about stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. I would agree. I agree with you there. I think you, you have no judgment for people's passions, but I think you, you, you're not afraid to, have an evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one I thought of because I just remember one in particular. Mm -hmm. Do you, what is our, the, if you thought about it, all the fights that we've ever had, what's the biggest fight we've had? Okay, let me tell. Okay. Okay, so when we, so when I, when, when we first got married. <gasps> oh, wait, what, I know this one. Okay, go ahead. I have another one. Okay, the, the, <laughs> when, when we when we, I when we first got married, um, you know, Allison right out of undergrad went and got a job, and it was a good job. Mm. And she lived at home for two years to save money so she could put a down payment on a house. And I was in grad school. I was working at I worked at a, a like a boys' home to help pay for things. And then when I went to, when I was in my doc program, I did research and was a TA. And then I also worked at Nordstrom, but I was in no, in no world that I have money. And Allison, like when I bought my first car, Allison paid $3,000 to, for the down payment. So I was like on the dole. <laughs> and then we moved in together. We just got married and I was, I, bought dead, a house. I was dead broke. Mm -hmm. And Allison had saved the money throughout her twenties, put the down payment on the house. And I was again, like on the dole. And I remember like, you know, Allison would go, would, you know, be working and I'm like, I'm working on a dissertation and she just thinks I am, you know, feeding my passions at the coffee shops that I'm working in or whatever. So we were, I feel like the stage was set for you to be annoyed with me not being good with money. And then I was doing, I've always done our taxes and we put all of our tax forms in this H and R block. We were getting our, getting our taxes <laughs> on the H and R block. Do you remember this? And I, saved all of the stuff and then tax they like, got time to file taxes and gone and i couldn't find that folder and allison i you were so mad about my inability to handle money i didn't respect <laughs> you the work that you had done and it was like uh, the house was shaking you were so mad <laughs> the neighbors were all out like what is going on okay <laughs> do you remember that fight yeah I remember we were in the shower and you were screaming. We're in the shower together and you're screaming at me about the thing. And I'm like, I could not figure out where the hell that form went. <laughs> and then smash cut to like five years later, we're moving out of that house. And the form, I had put it in the drawer where I was supposed to put it in, but it was like our, our drawer with a bunch of crap. And when I had closed the drawer, the file had slid to the back of the drawer and then dropped down behind all of the drawers. Do you remember this? And we found it, and I was like, son of a bitch. 
Like I did it. I had put it in a drawer. <laughs> I did it. Like I. Did. <laughs> That's the biggest fight. Oh, I can think of some one where I was like really livid with you. So you set the stage about me like working, you going to school. It was a lot of me working. While, I mean, that the I it it's something that like I think I'm really proud that you did, but it was a long road for both of us because mm-hmm. it's you know it's so many years of not making money and um we have you you eventually like finished got a job we got married it was like I think one of your first job like real jobs out of and we had a baby. <laughs> and I didn't even get very much maternity leave. I, I had gotten a new job, so I only got six weeks of maternity leave. And um, I really had post. I had a horrible postpartum depression. But anyway, like a few weeks in, D- David's back at work. Like he didn't. I feel like you didn't even take that much time off because you 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 just maybe two or three days. You yep. went back, and then like maybe two weeks in, like I'm there's like milk going every which way. <laughs> like I'm keeping this little thing that screams at me all day alive. I'm alone in this like new city, and David comes home from work and he goes, "Let me let me just pause and say, <laughs> let me just because I know where this is going. Let me just pause and say, I was young, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about postpartum depression, I didn't know anything about raising a child." Not sleeping? I didn't. Because you slept. I did not. Allison, okay. <laughs> Actually, in fairness, I did sleep at that point because you were breastfeeding. And so you were the one that had to get up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm doing all this in a new town, in a town I didn't want to move to, in a new town by myself. You, you were not by yourself. David, you, okay. All right, go ahead. Go, go so ahead. David comes home one day and there's... You know, the kitchen is not clean. I am not sleeping. I am breastfeeding a a slow breastfeeder, eater. And David comes home and he's like, you know, we need to talk about division of labor. (laughs) I have not slept. I'm keeping something alive. You just started a job. I've been working my whole life with you leaving a messy kitchen. Okay. He he almost got castrated. (laughs) I like how you talk to the camera. Whenever you're like really want me, you want some support. You look at the camera. I acknowledge that this was a bad. That was no. Bad I behavior. need a. I need an apology from that because I apologized a thousand times. No, but like a I'm really sorry. good one. Allison, I have apologized a million times. Let me just <laughs> also say that. I mean, I think it was a good lesson for us, though. I mean, we're we're you know it was our first, and and mm. the way that the I mean it was a big shift for us when we moved to bottles. Right, mm-hmm. so that you or I could get up and feed, um, and I just didn't know. We, I just, I, I was, I didn't know, and I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> but okay, but <laughs> okay, yeah. I still remember that conversation. We were at a sandwich. It's not shop. my. It's not my. We're at a, <laughs> I don't remember. We're at a sandwich shop. Yeah. And I was like, let's just talk. Yeah, I was being really nice. We need to talk about divisional. <laughs> on maternity i've only had six i only got six weeks it's like everything is falling apart <laughs> all right okay let's move on i feel like this is turning a lot of bad things that david's done <laughs> speaking of which what is your most embarrassing fight embarrassing fight with oh, you i have one no not with me just in life the dave matthews man yeah i think we should end the podcast on that story well okay can I tell it? Sure. Or do you want to tell it? I mean, I was 19. So let's just start there. I was 19. Hot. <laughs> petite. Very petite. So, okay. So we, so we, so as Allison said, we, so we met at like the, whatever, orientation for college. And mm-hmm. then we started dating, which was like, what? I don't know if that's early as September, but like by mid September we were dating. Mm-hmm. Right. And one of the very first dates we went on was with, with another couple to a Dave Matthews band concert. This was my very first concert. I'd never been to a, something like this. Oh before. really? Yes. Ahead of the concert, Allison and her friends have gotten into this thing. She had all these friends that were, I mean that she, she's still friends with them today, but they're all women 
that fancy themselves as being pretty tough. Well, yeah, and you have to remember that I started teaching cardio kickboxing in um, I I took it in junior high, but I started take I started teaching it in high school. So in my mind, I thought I was a kickboxer. So so that they all do, right? <laughs> so all these all these women, if you do them today, are the sweetest group of women. Not a single one of them would ever hurt a fly ever, but in their minds, they're like these, you know, badass girls. We're mighty from the mice, bed. you yes. know. We're just like little and bits. They have big personality. So they're all like, oh, I'm the tough one. No one messes with me. No, <laughs> right? They're doing that whole thing. And Allison's like, yeah, well, I, I, you know, I can do turbo kick. So anyway, <laughs> that's the stage. She has that in her mind. And I remember we go into the Dave Matthews Band concert, and you wanted to get a T-shirt. And the, you didn't like the way the guy talked to you at the T-shirt desk. Oh, and I don't you, remember and that. And you were like, you see that? He, how did? And I'm, and, I, and he's, you're getting all like riled up. I'm like, what is wrong? Well, when I don't have you remember. ever gotten riled up? <laughs> so then the, we go, and you know at the start of the concert, it's a big, we're, we can't afford like seats or anything. So we're in the green. Like we're just on the grass. And, you know, we're all talking, drinking, relaxing. And then all of a sudden, Dave Matthews Band comes on. And so everybody moves towards the stage. So we walked towards the stage, and there was somebody that had put out a, you know, a four by seven huge towel. Well, and they were like, that's our area. Well, we stood on the front of that towel, and we're sitting there, and Allison's leaning on me. Or they say, uh, get off our towel. And you say, we weren't on the towel, were we? Yeah, that's how it started. But uh, we weren't on the towel. We were in front of it. Well, we had walked on the towel. Our proximity to the towel led to some friction. All I know is they told us that we shouldn't be there because they had claimed it. You told them they could kiss it and that you weren't going to move. Then you were leaning on me. What? What? I did. The, none of this happened. How are you thinking that it started? We, so we, they were, they had their. It was a, a one of those gr- grass areas. They put out a towel, and everyone c- moves forward. But we weren't on their towel. We were just in front of their space. They wanted to sit and watch the concert, but we were standing and watching the concert. So we were, we were, we were obstructing their visibility. Okay. And they and they were like, "Can you move?" And we didn't move. But I, I don't feel like I was confrontation. I was just leaning on you. And then you, okay, you were confrontational. Not at that point. Not at that point. Can I tell? Can I? Okay, that's your. I'd like to tell a different story. Your memory's fuzzy. Okay, you're but getting you're, older. In your, okay. <laughs> in my wor- in my world, you said I'm not moving. That led to friction. So then you're leaning on me, and they kicked the leg that was holding all of your weight. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're leaning, and you had all your weight on one leg, and then on me, and they kicked the she. This lady who was must have been like 55. Uh, she had a mullet and a Christmas tree on her sweater. I remember that. <laughs> she kicked the back. She kicked the back of Allison's knee. So I fell forward. And so I'm just saying that you did something to, f- to make her think that she needed to kick. I knee. I think because there was like five or six of us. I think she she kicked the smallest one. She wasn't kicking you because I didn't say anything to them. But I, Allison was in a mood and told her we're not moving. That's not true, yes, you Dave. Did. So anyway, I don't like how you tell this story because so anyway, it's wrong. So anyway, she kicks Allison's knee and Allison goes turns to me and now we just started dating. Like I don't know what kind of person I'm with right now. <laughs> and Allison goes that bitch just kicked my knee. And I go, "Ignore her. Ignore her. Let's just watch the concert, relax, ignore her." Allison turns around and says, I have a black belt in in Taekwondo, and I will fuck you up. I lied about that. So she doesn't. She has a thing <laughs> in turbo kicks or whatever, right? And then the lady, and I'm going, like, you can imagine, like, I'm thinking, like, I got this, like, you know, <laughs> cute girlfriend, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, what is going to happen? I can just look straight. Because what Allison doesn't, I think women should know, is when they start a fight, the husbands or the boyfriends are, like, obligated <laughs> to be involved in the fight. So I'm just thinking like, oh, dear God, get me out of here, right? And Allison's ready to go. So Allison says, I'll fuck you up. And then she starts making fun of Allison. Then the lady takes a, has a glass. There's one more like fight because she's making fun of you. You turn around. She takes a glass of wine and dumps it on your head. 
No, she didn't do it from, I was looking at her. So when I turned around, so you're, you're telling the story so wrong. It's oh, so anyway, she answer. looks, I turn around and I say, I'm a black belt and I will fuck you up, which is all a lie. And I shouldn't have said that, but she kicked me. Then she poured her wine on my head. Not immediately. Yes. Immediately. Yes. And then I, gr- I'm telling you, it definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, I, by the not. way, this was 25 years ago, and I I remember it clear as day because <laughs> you said that, and I was thinking, who am I with? Okay, this was not my finest moment. So she, I don't feel like you should be telling so people she, this. So then she dumps the wine on your head, and then Allison, Miss Black Belt in Taekwondo, just <laughs> leaps in the air <laughs> at her, right? And they, uh, and the David, and, why and are you telling I, this? And I grab Allison. And I'm trying to pull her off. My buddy's also trying to grab Alice and pull her off. This older lady's husband is pulling her off. And they we finally peel them apart. And the lady yells, that bitch lit, ripped my titty off. <gasps> David. That's what she said. You know, though, in the end, she got kicked out. And then everybody around saw that she dumped the wine and kicked her out. Yeah, and kicked me. She was definitely the instigator of um of the violence yes but that's my favorite story of you and i think she lost that battle because she got kicked out of the concert and i got to watch but the I did, concert but and then afterwards <laughs> allison's going like if i wanted to right she's back to her her <laughs> if i wanted to i had her by the hair and i could have <laughs> kneed her in the face david i don't condone violence <laughs> but what it all was saw, not my finest moment but we all saw what your real move is nipple grabbing <laughs> david <laughs> So not okay. I was nineteen. Stop. <laughs> Do you have any good stories like that? Of me, I haven't. No, no. Me getting in a fight. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Oh, I do have one. I have a. I have a embarrassing almost fight story. There was a. a I was driving. This is a long time ago <laughs> when we were at that same small house. I was driving, uh, and I was I was doing something, and some guy uh, gave me the middle finger. Mm-hmm. I, I must have, I, I'm sure I did something wrong, mm-hmm. but he was really outraged and gave me a middle finger. And I go, you know what? Let's give this guy a scare. So I turn around and I chase his car. <gasps> David. And, I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not even mad, but I'm like, <laughs> I want him to know that there's consequences in this world. <laughs> and I'm here to let you know, this is what happens when you start just, you don't give middle fingers out willy nilly or something to chase you down. So I'm chasing him down. Right. And I'm thinking, this fun. is fun. Uh, Dave. Right, this guy's really, Dave, this there's crazy people. They're going to shoot well, you. All of a sudden, I turn on the corner, and he has pulled his car off the side of the road, and he's out of the car, and he's big. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like thinking, like, I'm going to show him, and then just go, oh, shit, and I just drove right by him and kept going. And then I'm going, oh, my God, I live in this neighborhood. And, and he's going to see my car. And, car and my is car orange. is burnt orange. And I'm like, so then I spend the next half hour driving around trying to like lose track of, like I'm like, where do mm-hmm. I park my car so he doesn't find it? Anyway, that's the, clo- that's like the most stupid thing that I've, that's the, that's the most sort of fight adjacent thing I've done. That was stupid. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh. That was fun. We've learned any, from there. Mm-hmm. Any, so the tips would be, Okay, I got some tips. Okay. I should recognize your love language mm-hmm. when you're showing it. Mm-hmm. I should also make an effort to plan more. Mm-hmm. I think that those are the two tips. Just you should Tell you articulate. that because you're feeling stressed, I'm going to do this. So you know that I'm, I'm tra- tracking your well of emotion. I th- so I th- your puddle of emotion. <laughs> Yeah, I just think you, it's not that you're... Your sprinkle that, of emotion. It's not that... <laughs> I'm not saying that you don't care about my emotion. I don't think you worry about it. I I disagree with you, but I don't think you... Because I think you're not perceptive on how I'm handling it. Okay, that's possible. <clears throat> All right, any you. other tips? No. I feel like the tips ended up mean being David has a couple of homework assignments. Which this podcast, it seems like it drifts that direction. <laughs> 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 All right, love you. Love you.